Hi there, Alex T here. I know, my hair is black when it should be brown, but I'll tell you why later. Anyway, I'm here to discuss with you the basic biome grassland. So that's why we came out to Duluth, Minnesota to give you a better example of a grassland biome. You're not in Minnesota. Oh really? So if we're not in Minnesota, can you tell me where we are? Dude, we're in your guest bedroom where you make all of your movies. Ah, great! Thanks for ruining my entire act. Next you're gonna say all my plants aren't real. Um, cause they're not. They're all plastic. See? But that doesn't need to stop your presentation. Alright then, let's move on. Now the average grassland biome can get as high as 38 degrees Celsius, whereas in winter it can get as low as negative 40 degrees Celsius. Now let's move on. Now the average amount of precipitation a grassland biome can see is about 50.8 centimeters to 127 centimeters each year. For those of you who don't know how much that is, that's about 20 to 50 inches of rain. Now let's move on to something a little different. What's that you got there? Oh, about a cubic foot of soil. That was a horrible pun. Oh, come on! Where's your sense of humor? Gone with the rest of my hair. Killjoy. Anyway, grassland soil has very deep organic layers. And is very rich in nutrients, too. This is really good for the plants. Speaking of which... Hey, janitor. Take a look at this. What is it? It's a lady smock, one of the plants native to the grasslands. Grassland plants have deep roots that obtain moisture deep underground. The roots also keep the plant connected to the ground. This is good for when animals are grazing. Some plants have been known to survive winter by using the snow on top of them as insulation during the winter and then using it as water when spring comes. Though some plants can survive winter, none of them would be able to survive in a tundra because of permafrost. Do you smell that? That was me. Oh, God, not that. I meant the plant. Wait, what was that? What was what? There, right there. Get the camera on it. Oh, you missed it. Well, not exactly. Wait, what are you saying? When it flew over, I managed to get a snapshot of it. Okay, two things. One, where'd you get the camera? And two, how'd you even take a picture if you didn't even have it out? I'll tell you how later. But right now, let's just look at it. Alright then. Oh my god, what is that? Heh, <laughs> sorry about that. That's from last summer. Ah, here we go. Ah, the Ferruginous Hawk. Hope I pronounced that right. This large, long-winged hawk can be found in the arid and semi-arid areas of North America, but they can't be found in a few areas. Some of these areas include forest interiors, narrow canyons, cliff areas, and areas of high elevation. What was that? That would be an owl, a nocturnal animal that's only awake at night. Hey, did you know that there are some plants that are actually diurnal? Well, what's diurnal? That's a good question. The definition of diurnal is a periodic alteration of condition with day and night. As you can see, this flower is closed up at night time, but during the day, it opens itself up. Now that we've covered the basic parts of this lesson, it's time for my favorite part of the entire movie. The effects of human interaction. You see, people are always setting fire to grassland areas for beneficial reasons, but it cripples many services and goods that the grasslands provide. Some of these services include food supply for livestock, maintaining biodiversity, storing carbon, and a few other things. Easy, bunny. You already gave the lesson. You don't need to light anything up. Where'd you even get that thing anyway? You don't even tell me where you got a camera from, and now you're busting my chops about me pulling a flamethrower out of thin air? Well, is this even legal? I don't know, but it's fun. Maybe you should wait to get a permit till you- Too late! Fire in the hole! Oh my god, what did you do? I just gave a demonstration of human interaction. Don't worry, I saved one tree. I needed an example of a producer from the deciduous forest. Why'd you need that? Uh, well, we didn't have enough groups to do each biome, so we split the deciduous forest in different parts for each group. And as you can see, my group got the producers. Anyway, this is a beech tree. I hope I said that correctly. It grows best in deep, 
rich, moist, well-drained soils. The average tree height is about 90 to 100 feet and can spread from 50 to 70 feet. Beechwood is used in a lot of furniture such as tables, stools, and cabinets. And that's pretty much it for this lesson. So if this lesson is done, that means you don't need to cause any more fire in the hole! Damage. Now that the lesson is done, please take the time to answer the following questions. Number one, what advantages do grassland plants get from snow? Please list two answers. Number two, why can the grassland plants not survive in a tundra? And number three, I know these are taking too long, define diurnal and nocturnal. When finished, please go over the answers with the rest of the class. Well, I hope you learned something from this lesson. Number one, take care of your environment. And number two, playing with fire is awesome! Thank you for participating. Have fun cleaning this up, janitor. Ah, come on. Why is it that every time you guys make a mess, I have to clean it up? Because that's your job. Oh, yeah.